BBC aren't really doing well with anybody right now. Uh, uh, you know, BBC don't like Jews, but just beneath Jews, Doctor Who fans, right? Doctor Who. And that's how bad it's got. The BBC are treating Doctor Who fans nearly as badly as they treat Jews. Oh, my God. I mean, that... Uh, okay, guys, well, welcome to the club, right? Welcome to the club. Doctor Who fan slam. Ridiculous BBC un unacceptable major change announced. Again, the what's unacceptable about it is it should debut on BBC One at uh, first. And I don't think it should hit iPlayer, quite frankly, until uh, after, after it's uh, been on there, right? I think it, it could debut at the same time on BBC and on... Uh, uh, Disney Plus around the world, but like to, to for it to get it before uh, before the BBC, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Doctor Who fans have been left raging. Well, I think that's actually fair, right? I do think that's fair. Uh, the BBC announced that uh, that two episodes of this cult sci-fi show will air midnight to coincide with the uh, with a respectful uh, respectful time in the US. So are they getting two episodes as well on Disney Plus? Oh, God. I mean, may, uh, Doctor Who magazine comes out next week. Or does it? Oh, God. God. Hey, let's see when the next one comes out. Doctor Who magazine is as the, all the journalistic integrity of Hello magazine. Now, it is just shit. I mean, like, it got, it's really worse than it, than it was under the Jodie era. Jodie era, it was sanctimonious and um, hated you if you if you weren't a uh, massive political bigot, right? Now it's just like, Empty pap. Oh, I can't wait to see that Millie Gibson interview. That's just bizarre, right? That's just well. What day? When's this coming out? Twenty eighth. So it's um, today's Sunday, the seventeenth. Oh yeah. So next week it'll be, it'll be out next week. Man, I wish I ditched Doctor Who magazine and, and got the um, the Chronicles. Right? They they those Chronicles things look excellent. Uh, uh, to find found this curious after the show, uh, push back the schedule to air the first episode of the sci fi show, uh, uh, to midnight so it can air the same episodes at the uh, US at a decent time. So, it, it are they they don't know either, apparently. It's just fucking chaos. I'm sorry, right? I mean, you announce when it's, when it's coming out, and it's like still unclear. The change means Doctor Who fans. Won't be sitting down on a Saturday evening to watch their beloved show, uh, with the episode instead landing on iPlayer at midnight in order to keep the new Disney partner over in America happy. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to teach you a Jewish word. It's a shonda. It's a disgrace. It's a, it's absolute disgrace. And look, they try and keep put, they keep, try and keep putting uh, Millie Gibson in some kind of burqa like attire, but she they can't stop her looking hot. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Uh, and so now, diehard fans have expressed their disgust at, at the schedule time, as it's going against the uh, tradition to please the American audience on on May 11th. Uh, taken to Twitter, for, uh, formerly known as uh, taken to X, formerly known as Twitter. One person viewed, I don't care if it's down to the time zone. Doctor Who is airing at midnight in the UK, so it can uh, air at a respectful time uh, uh, for the Yanks. Is when I start uh, flag <laughs> flag bashing. Burn down the White House immediately. Well, that that seems a little extreme. But listen, it could be worse, mate. Right? It could be worse. They could be sending you uh, 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 food packages as well. Those damned Americans. I mean, like we we seen how people didn't like them today. Uh, meanwhile, another viewer said might uh, might move to America so I can watch Doctor Who at tea time again. A third pen can Americans uh, take a step back from. Uh, Piss taking for one minute and realize Doctor Who has been an event television for the UK for over six years. It's ingrained in our culture. It's made it, uh, and it's made in Britain. Actually, I was talking with Doctor Alex today. So uh, Doctor Alex's stuff uh, um, is season fourteen, of which my uh, oh yeah, my episode apparently is going to air head to head with uh, the first episode of season one. Right, the uh, uh, my episode is the hunt for the worshipful. Was it the Worshipful Lord Gallifrey. It's something like that. <laughs> I wrote it. I should remember. But uh, we, we were talk talking about, you know, why is it important to have British writing, right? Uh, uh, people, uh, it's predominantly a, Brit a British writing staff and Doctor Who. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for American boys. I would love to see J. Michael Straczynski as a uh, showrun, right? I would certainly like to see him over, over uh, Rusty Davis, quite frankly. 
right? I, I think he's he's great, right? But the thing is this, he was talking about the, um, the stuff he was writing, and when he and I, he put uh, cultural um, expressions in, right? We do it organically without thinking. Like when we put in Shakespearean quotes, it's like, you know, uh, uh, all's well, you know, all's well that ends well, right? It's just, it's part of our culture, right? It, it, in, if you're American, it's not really part of your culture, right? It's like it's like me trying to organically insert to, uh, yeah, can I organically, organically insert, darling? Uh, uh, it's like, um, like oh yeah, Oscar, not Oscar Wilde, Mark Twain, or Edgar Allan Poe, right? It, it, it's, it's not, an, it's not, it's not something I grew up. I mean, I grew up with it, but not like ingrained in my culture. Meanwhile, another viewer said, uh, "My, oh, my words, it's a bit um, bitter." I thought that, and I speak for everyone in the UK when I say we want to watch it at seven PM on the tenth uh, of May on BBC One. Appealing to you, oh, actually, you want to watch it on the 11th. Appealing to your minuscule uh, American audience it, uh, is not it. I agree with you completely, right? Well, I first point out, time travel is actually required because I am unable to watch it at midnight. As six person said, it's like uh, it's like global accessibility, but uh, the show shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't air, uh, shouldn't air at so the show shouldn't air at seven p.m. UK time. And the rest of the countries follow that instead. I think that makes a lot of sense, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. Feels like uh, priority in the show for America and, uh, and not Europe. Uh, and I'm not a fan of that. You, you shouldn't be, right? I can. I, and can, I, can I just remind you the uh, uh, my, my thumbnail? Because I think it's so, so incredibly accurate, right? I think it's so incredibly right. Um, what is it? Big question about the new era of Doctor Who is how are they going to fuck up next? Uh I mean, and you can't say, oh, they're going to do more gay shit. No, they fuck up in every way, shape, and form. It's incredible, right? It's incredible. Uh, where are we at? Is this it? Is that the right window? Yes, yeah, right window. Uh, uh, simultaneous release all over the world is a great idea, but releasing the episodes in the middle of the night in Europe and primetime US is nonsense. Why didn't you stay with the common primetime Europe midday uh, America? So we can all enjoy it together, like the specials. A few percent. Okay, absolutely correct. The BBC actually say anything about it? earlier this week. The broadcaster braced itself for a, bar a barrage abuse when it announced a major change. The first. Oh no, it didn't. It said, "Oh, how marvelous! We got such a big announcement coming on Friday. Friday, where they can run and fucking hide." Oh man. Yeah, it's just I, uh, it, it's when you want to bury a story, you you put it out on Friday afternoon. And it's actually, it's actually quite quite a successful uh, ploy because but but by the time we get to uh, Wednesday this week, it, it's going to be just a thing at that point. Uh, with that kind of audience, serious audience, so you see Doctor and Ruby uh, played by Millie Gibson travel through space and time with adventures to uh, unknown lands in the Regency era in England to outer space of the world in the sixties. Now, here's the thing: I still think the um, the building blocks they have for uh, for the season, right? Or for for the stories, they they sound. It sounds like it could be good, but I don't know. I'm just, I don't know how I'm still a fucking optimist at this point, right? It's beyond me, right? It's absolutely beyond me how I, how I remained optimistic because nothing about this is good, right? Nothing about this is good. Uh, um, that last my greatest light to unleash a whole new season. Oh, blah 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 blah. Uh, Russell, it's Chevron season it said. At last, it's my great delight to unleash a whole new season of, Do of the Doctor and Ruby's adventures together. Monsters, chasers, villains, and a terrifying secret that's been spanning space and time for decades. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Don't miss a second. Uh, along with the teaser trailer, uh, which I'll play that quickly. And that, for me, the teaser trailer looked quite, quite exciting. But again, I'm easily um, impressed. Did I? Oh, here it is. Thank you. Ready for this? Oh, come on. Give me a number, give me a year. Ah! It's going to be a moment. Here it comes. Yeah, I just think Millie gives him probably uh, um, acted him off the screen, right? I think she probably majorly overshined him. May 11th, unless you're in America. Now, I do quite like this, the wink to camera. I, I like this as well. I think the design of this is very good. Right, very modern, very hip. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I do like that. 
you know, just from a, a design standpoint, I think it's strong. Uh, we're using such a bit as uh, we've got such a big announcement. We're using AI troll accounts. I know, says PD Rich. <laughs> <laughs> um, not how they're going to F up. It's not that how will they uh, F up the first and many uh, times in one show. Well, again, that, that's what you have to come to my channel to find out, right? Uh, how they screw up the gay stuff is so bad that even gay people, uh, that not even gay people are like, exactly! Oh, it's, yeah, that's the thing. It's not for gay people. It's for queer people, right? And I think they're probably... That's quite quite a good uh, um, description. Now, having said that, I think the idea of having a season with new new uh, new monsters uh, exclusive is probably a good idea. But who knows, right? Don't miss a second. Along with the teaser trailer, uh, social media accounts, and uh, uh, no time travel required. Uh, where will you be watching uh, BBC iPlayer uh, on the 11th and the 10th uh, May where available on Disney Plus? It, it just... It's just so, it's such a bad idea, right? It's such a bad idea. It, it staggers your mind, right? It staggers the imagination how bad an idea it is. Now, here's something interesting, though. Uh, uh, and again, it's weird commenting on this because it's not really working out, right? Like, I'm not really that excited for this new era, right? Uh, uh, but here uh, we have Susan Twister play, huge foe. So this looks like the big bad for the era, and uh, uh, the, the, it's, you see it ties back to uh, um, the what's it called again? The Mavity thing. Uh, uh, oh, what's the bloody name? It. The name I have going through my head is Charles Dance. It's not Charles Dance. He did not discover gravity. Isaac Newton discovered gravity, and apparently a, a gay brown Isaac Newton did it now. Um, so I'm fine. According to an article in the Sun. Susan Twist has already appeared briefly as two different characters in Doctor Who specials. Uh, will play a major antagonist in the Shooting Gut was Doctor Who 2024 series of Doctor Who. So, oh, okay. So I saw her uh, very clearly, uh, yeah, with uh, the housekeeper for I, I, I think you don't. Who's the second one? Um, just appeared in the first special of Wild Blue Yonder as Mrs. Mary Jew. Uh, so I think Newton's housekeeper, Mary Jew, encourages Newton to find inspiration uh, and a fine, on a fine length of summer day in 1666. It also happens uh, to be the day the TARDIS haphazardly ha ha lands on an apple tree above him, uh, apparently mis uh, mishearing something. Donna says Newton's laws of, of universal gr uh, gravitation is now the laws of mavitation. It's such a dark... Again... That that is so indicative of this new era. Like it's just shit. Oh, Mavity. And they keep referring back to Mavity, right? They won't let it go. And don't get me wrong, I like the the, the, the glove thing he had in Church and Ruby Road. Just like the Mavity. It's like, hey, let me call back to the uh, uh the second shittest thing about the anniversary specials. Oh no, the third well, I don't know. Second shit is thing, the third shit is thing. I don't know. It, it, it's up there, right? It's, it, let me call back to one of the shit things I just did. I mean, it will it, it only be worse if he bumped into uh, uh, Davros do, doing a jig again. Fuck me, that was awful. Oh, God. Just everything he's done has been an absolute failure. I'm sorry. Probably, I would say, Church and Ruby Road owes a lot to, of its success to, to Millie Gibson. Which is probably why she was canned, right? I, I that's what I think. Uh, so, so, so they're apparently uh, missing a phone. Uh, second time we see her on the Christmas special, Church and Ruin. Now it's 2023, and Twist new appearance appears at a club as a woman who looks like a hippie with a bohemian hairstyle. The woman heckles Ruby Sundays, Millie Gibson's band, and strangely asks for a 16th century Christmas carol, Gaudette. Really? And again, you know, that's that's the one bit that really pulled me out of that uh, uh, Church on Ruby Road, having the, uh, uh, I assume it's a trans woman. It seemed like a bloke dressed up as a woman uh, um, in, in a bat. I was like, fuck me. Like, everything is about saying, yay, not being straight is good. You should try not being straight. Be queer. Oh, everybody loves being queer. Being queer is so happy. Well, you know, I hate to tell you this, 
most people find real happiness with family, uh, you know, marriage, family, and children, right? That, 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 that just the reality, right? It's just the reality. Uh, tried, uh, tried as referenced by Mel, was it? So uh, tried as referenced by Mel Bush in the sixth anniversary of the Giggle as she attempts to use dynamic software to align telescopes, satellites, and deep space scans into a mesh, uh, mesh reflectors to focus on a single threat. We see the Doctor's new companion. What, 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 what the hell is Triad all about? Why are you bringing it up? I don't know. We've seen uh, the Doctor's new companion, Ruby Sunday, uh, disembark from Double Dem uh, Double Decker Bus with a Triad technology uh, uh, advertisement. Oh, that's interesting. The advertisement isn't, uh, isn't visible in the special, but it was spotted at a location filming captured for crews of a Doctor Who Unleashed. The Sun uh, first mentioned Susan, Tri uh, Susan Triad, a prop manager. Sun isn't the first mention of Susan Triad. Who's Susan Triad? A prop manager for uh, a, a prop magazine cover for Union Jack Icon, spotted uh, framed in Doctor Who showrunner's office in a Blue Peter clip from December, contains the image of Susan Twist as Susan Triad. Okay, so she seems to be the big bad, right? Bloody hell. I'm amazed somebody went to the trouble to find that. Wow. I really, I am amazed. Uh, someone else pointed out to me the, uh, this direction of this. It was implied that we see Mrs. Marriage you again uh, in the form of Susan Triad. Russell Lee Davis had a Union Jack icon uh, magazine mock-up uh, cover feature featuring her in the office. Okay, fine. That's interesting. If, if any of this was interesting. <laughs> That's interesting, if this wasn't shit. <laughs> Susan character is going to appear through uh, space and time following the Doctor through new adventures, but she won't be a friendly face. She's going to be a huge foe for the Time Lord. Maybe she's a terrible Zodan uh, for the Time Lord and Ruby to face off against uh, and the reveal will be explosive. Well, we'll be that explosive. We know about it now. Since I've been watching on location filming uh, for episode four, she's keen. She's seen with a shock of white hair and a black uh, and uh, a strange black face markings, mumbling strangely to herself. Her uh, character is seen as the 2024 series uh, trailer approaching the TARDIS on a tilt a hill cliff top from a distance. Uh, so it's all says she will appear again and again in the upcoming eight-part series. It's striking the actress named Susan Twist will play uh, a character Sue in the Triad. Because you know that Susan is named for the Doctor's granddaughter and first companion. The, uh, this is this is quite a Susan Twist indeed. Okay. When Millie Gibson asked uh, in Doctor Who magazine 600 if she would give away uh, hints about what to look forward to doing for she critically said... There's a twist. There's always a twist. Okay, so that must be Susan. That, that's see, she's smart as well. I I'm so fucked off. They fired her, right? Uh, the 24th uh, Doctor Who series will uh, premiere simultaneously worldwide on BBC iPlayer uh, in the UK and Disney Plus. Were available at midnight in British time uh, at 11 uh, of May 2024. With the first and second episode of the series. The second episode entitled The Devil's Chord. The two episodes will also be broadcast back to back before Eurovision uh, on May 11th on BBC One. Okay, so they are putting those two uh, out. Man, so I got to watch both of those before uh, uh, come on. So I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll come on like after it's finished, essentially. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, look, at least I'll be able to watch it as soon as Sabbath ends, right, which is uh, helpful for me. But here's it. I can't believe I'm still remaining optimistic because everything they do really sounds like it's going to be shit, right? It really sounds like it's going to be shit. But listen, if you're craving great entertainment, we have you covered, right? We have you covered. Uh, uh, you know, I like to bring you fantastic uh, crowd crowdsourcing uh, uh uh, crowdsourcing entertainment. Well, I haven't got that for you here, right? <laughs> Doctor Who showrunner Chris Chibble auctioned 
the rights to his first novel. No, okay. How do you how do you like uh, uh, sh uh, sound uh, uh, your complete disinterest? Chris and I sold his new novel at auction, uh, Death at, at 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 the White Heart, which revolves around web of secrets and lies. Okay, he actually sold it. Okay, Penguin Michael Joseph wins the auction with the non North American rights. Uh, to this, I can't believe. Like, how much did it? How much did it go for? Fuck me. Like, whoever it went for has more money in the sense. That's for sure. I, look, he couldn't write fucking TV. Why do you think he can write a book? Chris Chimnall, uh, Chimnall writer and former sh uh, showrunner for Doctor Who, uh, when Jordy Whittaker played the Doctor here, keep up, as well as Law and Order UK, Life, uh, Life on Mars, uh, Torchwood, and the creator of the TV series Brawl Touch. And a comic strip writer. Really? Don't he wrote many comics? Here. He has sold a new novel at auction, Death at the White Heart. Apparently it revolves around secret and lies uh, in a small community after a local pub landlord. It's so bad. Look, I'm, I'm yawning at this, just, just looking at it. Man, it's boring. The auction was held between six bidding publishing houses uh, uh, and was one of Joel Richardson's publishers at uh, Penguin, at Penguin Michael Joseph. He saw the deal saw in when the non North American world writes for the two, for two books from Chris Chibnall's agent Eugene Furness. That agent must be the most incredible salesman ever, right? The first book, Death at White Heart, will be published in January 2025. While Pam Dorman, uh, senior vice president of the publisher. Pamela Dorman Books has already preempted the uh, preempted the American North American rights. Novel set in picturesque village in Dorset. Well, man, that's stretching it for him, isn't it? That's where he lives. When a landlord's body is discovered, uh, Detective uh, Nicola Bridge uh, investigation uh, puts a spotlight on a vividly drawn community as she unpicks a web of secrets and lies to finally unmask a killer. Now. Wouldn't it be weird if he if he actually wrote a good novel, right? Or like he, this becomes his thing, right? Because uh, tell you, Doctor Who was shit. <laughs> uh, to, in a statement, uh, Christian was said, having always harbored a desire to write a novel. When you harbor a desire to run Doctor Who, and you fuck that up. Uh, I've been working on Death and White Heart for a couple of years now. It's exciting, nerve wracking. Uh, to reveal uh, real existence, the book is set in a landscape we all know and love, uh, a genre I adore. So basically, it's a say, more, more broad church, apparently, which is just like a mystery set in his local town. Uh, okay. This next bit, I, I don't think I, I might just cause my brain to implode. Joel Ritson added, it's no exaggeration to say Christian was one of Britain's most accomplished and celebrated storytellers. No, 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 no. It is an exaggeration, right? Uh, uh, it's an exa it, it, It's a huge exaggeration. He's, I mean, he's very accomplished for having absolutely no talent, right? I mean, very, very accomplished for being a complete talent as fuck. That's quite impressive, right? That is quite, quite impressive, right? Uh, uh, a complete talentless fuck has still managed to, to sell stories somehow, right? Uh, uh, just completely managed to sell stories. Fine. I, somehow, right? Oh, I'm going to close. Doink. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Uh, and it's sheer delight to see how smoothly his talent has shifted from uh, to, into novel writing. Well, again, it's, it's pretty easy to shift into anything when you have no, no talent. Death of White Light Heart is both gripping mystery and a searingly clever portrait of a small community. Okay, everything they're saying there is a lie, right? Everything they're saying is a lie. Oh, my God. Man, oh, man. Um, Doctor Who, the Doctor Donna was always the right end game. No, really, it wasn't. I'm sorry. You know, it, it was a very disappointing end game, right? One of the many mistakes of Russell T. Davis. Right, was to bring back David Tennant and Catherine Tate and destroy the good work they did and leave the doctor in a like very non Doctor Who space. And with and the by generation, I don't fucking understand. 
I don't say that at all. There is a Doctor's friendship with Donna Noble, can say, is the most memorable on TV. Yes, Rose Tyler has fans since she was... Uh, yeah, but listen, Billy Piper looks unrecognisable from uh, Rose at this point. Uh, has fans since she was the first modern companion of the TV... No, they have fans because she was very good. Right, and Chris could identify with because she was pretty much... Uh, a, a pretty much a kid meeting, uh, meeting the doctor for the first time. Uh, she was the same age as Millie, roughly, or portrayed her as being the same age as Millie. Every companion's arc in the current series of uh, series is one of uh, someone who discovers the vastness of life in the universe after meeting the doctor and how it changes them for the better. Donna's arc has been the fullest. Well, yeah, because she said she'll come back and she's super famous. Right, and they thought it'll bring in viewers. Again, I, I like I, I I don't understand how they're not putting all this together. Right, it seems, it seems relatively easy to me. Uh, unlike Rose and Martha, uh, uh, Freema uh, Adjum, Donna was not in love with the Doctor. She was a woman in her thirties, late forties now. Wait, how many ago? How many? Come back to fifties. Uh, not in the beginning of a life as uh, as an adult trying to find a way in the world. The Doctor's companions tended to be lonely authors like him, uh, being being Ace Mel or Rose. He felt superior to Martha and took her for granted. No, he. Well, I mean, like he felt. I mean, he felt superior in that he was a superior being. But he, no, no, not at all. Right, uh, uh, he really liked Martha, right? Uh, uh, and he didn't take it for granted. I mean, look at Gridlock, right? When 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 she was kidnapped, we did play that one bit. Does this look like somebody taking anybody for granted for you? I love Gridlock, Gridlock's my all time favorite, right? I really love it. Uh, where is it? We go, doink, uh, Doctor Who, the TARDIS. Uh, tenth Doctor, right? Gridlock be series three, wouldn't it? Yes. Fine. Look, there's a scene where she's kidnapped. Sorry. Right, and he was just enjoying showing off, right? Which is fine. I love that little bit, bit of humanity that he, he gave her. Uh, that they, they gave the Doctor. And she is stunning. Free, uh, free, free Madgerman. Where was it? Where, where'd she go? Oh, yeah, just stunning. I oh, yeah, absolutely beautiful woman. So wait, wait, wait. When, when she, here? But I, I, I love the doctor's reaction. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really, yeah. This is a really genuine reaction of complete care. Their heads on chemicals. <laughs> sorry, I'm really, really sorry. We just need three. That's all I want. I can help. Oh, we can help. The first you got to let her go. Sorry. Yeah, I, I get. I, look, I, I'm a bit down on Tenant now, but that is, that is pure Doctor Who, right? Uh, uh, really, really, really work. Oh, I love Gridlock. I, 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 Gridlock is just I, the, again, the difference between then and now. Everything they did worked, right? Everything they did uh, uh, do, doing now is there's a massive failure. So yeah, take Martha for granted. Fuck you. Uh, and yeah, he was she was an unrequited love, but uh, it was kind of a stroppy idea. But uh, whatever. Uh, and she had a family for support when she had enough. She left him, and then she married Mickey. Donna was one uh, today. She wouldn't marry Mickey today. She would marry. Uh, a, uh, a black woman, right? They'll, they'll find another black woman. She would marry Liz Ten, right? That's that's who she would go off and marry now if it was done today. Uh, where did Liz Ten from Beast Below? Where was Donna was one companion where the Doctor was definitely not quite her type. Uh, she had family with a uh, with a dysfunctional uh, history. Her mother Sylvie Dackling belittled her, but uh, her grandfather Wolf and father Je uh, Jeff. Uh, Howard Atwood uh, doted on her. Um, I think a little, but yeah, listen, I found her her family set up to be very credible, very very relatable. And she was a uh, she was a bit of a mean girl and a bully to other girls, especially to her uh, to her friend Nereid. No, she wasn't. She would she would stand her own against Nereid, 
right? But she wasn't a bully to her, right? Uh, um, where the, the, uh, the later running joke of the series, Doctor... This person has no conception of what of, of the David Tennant is. It's really bizarre. Donna started out as a bridezilla who wasn't even bothered uh, about getting kidnapped by aliens. She was extremely bothered by it, right? Uh, them being late for a wedding. She was extremely bothered by it. Her meeting with the doctor changed her and made her see uh, see beyond herself and investigate the suspicious alien activity around London. Do I have to have the trailer where the let's have a look? I'll say because that that's also one of the all time great trailers. I think I have it over here. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Doink. Uh, and yeah, by the way, talking about the roller, they still haven't talked about if they're going to do a, a, a Hooniverse rollout on um, what's the word again? Or uh, on uh, Disney Plus, right? So she was season four, I believe. I think I've got it here, Doctor. Yeah, here we go. Doink. There are things waiting in the darkness. Creatures of metal and fire. Again, I want you to pay attention to every element we're seeing on screen, how it all comes together. Perfect script, right? Great music. Listen to that Murray Gold music building and it's building and it's building, right? Uh, uh, you have the, the, the monsters, like in the distance, like, and you have uh, um, Catherine Tate's performance, which is pitch perfect. Blood, but he's out there burning through time. Facing a thousand dangers across the stars and never giving up. He looks like a man, but he's a legend. And his name is the Doctor. He'll come back to save us. And this time, I'm going to be ready. Then, just like that, we'll be gone. Oh, man, I miss those days. Fuck me. Oh, man, I miss those days. Doctor Who, next Saturday at 6.20 on BBC One. Yeah, I mean, that, that, again, reasonably... Uh, it, 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 what, what a great time, right? Man, if only we knew how great the times were when we lived them. Right? We know shitty times are when we lived them. I mean, unless, you, unless you, you know, you you, 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 you head up your ass. But, uh, man, we never know great times. I mean, and we had great times then. Oh, it's killing me. No, oh, crushing me, should I say. Uh, her meeting with the Doctor Danger, uh, then they're off together. Their friendship was one of equals. No, it wasn't. Uh, since she was never in awe of him, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a what, a well, 900 year, 1200 year, uh, year old time lord, and she's you know from Chiswick. My uh, the first ending of the story was the show's most tragic since she had to lose everything she ever he ever learned and uh, uh, or became. And the Doctor had to lose that. Now, I think that was a really great thing for his character. Here, let me pull up if I can find this. Hang on. It's um, Dalek Universe trailer from Big Finish, which uh, was... The trailer was stunning. The um, the actual, uh, um, you know, uh, realisation of it was... it was. Oh, is this it? I think this is it. The, the, the actual series was deeply underwhelming. Let me pull this up. Because, again, again, this is... When was this from? Three years ago? Oh, man, I wish it was better. Right? I wish it was better. Where's this doink? Doink. And download. Here we go. Share screen. Uh, doink. Now, I'm showing this A because it's a great trailer, and B, I want to show you the character development that losing um, Donna losing her memories uh, uh, made, right? Connor says, can you imagine a family of blood being made uh, these days with a character of colour being uh, cast as a servant? Uh, no. It, everything they make today turns to if I If I may quote, right, if I may quote a very, very wise person, I, uh, where is this little piece of wisdom, right? Well, I'm just looking for it. Uh, nothing's where you want it to be, right? Well, I thought it was down here. One second, let me look over there. 
No, not there, not there, not there, not there, not there, not there. No. Oh, here he goes. Everything woke turns to shit, okay? It's true. It's true. Look at what's happening. Everything woke do it doesn't need to turn to shit. Anyway, so let's watch this. They certainly don't have the money to do these anymore, do they? Big finish. Oof. Everything ends, eventually. Every story ever told finishes in death if you tell it long enough. It's sort of a fact of life. Got used to that now. Right, the post Donna 10th Doctor, I thought was a really interesting thing, right? They, they, they did something with the Doctor they really hadn't done before. Across time, across space, I've lost it all. Family, friends, my own people. My home, Donna. Right, Donna. Like, I really think that didn't bring the character to a depression, but it certainly moved him into like the um, later parts of his life, right? Which is where he where he wasn't so happy. Rose, I've always survived. I've always endured. I've always got through whatever's been thrown at me. However much I lose, I always carry on. To bear that burden. To remember them. Everything ends eventually. So, yeah, again, he's a very nihilistic doctor by the, by the time he got to the end of him. And I think, you know, the, I think the uh, rebirth as, a, as Matt Smith was really a gen generally about, about a rebirth, like starting again. But sometimes, just sometimes... Oh, if only this this matched that promise, right? It, it, you know the problem with Dalek Universe was no fucking Daleks. They didn't show up till the seventh episode. And <laughs> yeah, lockdown was very good for them. Anyway, yeah, no, well, that was good. Anyway, so wait, 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 wait. So, I'm still reading this article. Uh, uh, what's going on? Fine, yeah, yeah. So I was saying that that was, I think, really integral to both the character of the Doctor and the Doctor. Doctor in the sixth and the sixth anniversary special, the third act of the Doctor Donna story, and it was essentially taking a shit on the rest of the Doctor Donna story, in my estimation. She was not only restored to his life, but also her own family and daughter. At daughter. Who had the spare penis? But it's, it's uh, um, I think Crichton had the similar problem when he he was put put in the women's prison and uh, uh, was it season eight of Red Wolf? Uh, with the, 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 her love for uh, where we're up to her love for Rose is like comic redemption for all the girls she was mean to. She wasn't mean to everyone, and she wasn't a girl. For fuck's sake! Really, really. What what that bloke with a big thick chin and a, and a big swinging dick that girl okay then uh, she became a doctor donor again and the ultimate form of friend of their friendship the fourteenth doctor finally retired uh, setting down to adopt him as the ultimate end game for the uh, lonely wanderer no it was shit it was shit it was shit much like everything else Rossi David it was shit and may I say it was this Addy Tantamut you know absolutely fucking nothing. About Doctor, you're like the 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 stunning amount of how little you know about Doctor Who blows my mind, right? Blows my mind. <laughs> look at this, look at this article for that. I was going, I'll save this tomorrow, but no, I already got to see it. The 20 greatest uh, Doctor Who stories of all time ranked. Now, the thing, I, the reason I find this weird is they got Shooty Gutter in it, and uh, um, what's her name? Uh, Jodie Whittaker. Blimey, I just forgot Jodie Whittaker's name. God, if only I could do that more. Uh, um, how could she be in the top 20 stories of all time, right? I, I don't know. And Shooting Gut was been in one. I don't think that one story is the top worst or in the top 20. Let's see what they want to say. Curse of Frenric. Okay, Curse of Frenric. I, I, who, who wrote this? That's the other thing we got. By Craig Elvey. I can't remember. I think he's the one actually quite good. Curse of uh, uh, Fenric. I do agree. Now, Curse of Fenric is far superior 
in the uh, extended release with the new effects, right? Which is the one I believe is on iPlayer and the one they put out in TARDIS Tales. But, uh, um, it, it, I mean, this is just real classic, excellent Doctor Who, right? It's everything that's great about the Seventh Doctor era and it's everything great about uh, Doctor Who in general, right? It, again, it, these wonky, weird, bonkers little plots, right? Uh, uh, how, so British, right? They're so incredibly British, right? To say anything else is uh, is weird. But yeah, okay, I think it's starting well. No! Fusion of the Two was shit! Excuse me, it was absolutely shit. The whole thing rested on the big reveal of Jodie digging up a TARDIS and then turning out that uh, uh, Dr. Ru yeah, Dr. Ruth here, uh, the, the, the council estate doctor, was a... What? Okay, let me... How, how would they justify this at number 19? Through no fault of road, Jodie Wicker's dinner doctor will not be remembered as one of the, of the Pearl Pages. No, through many faults of her own. Maybe her complete inability to perform the role. Right? Uh, um, <laughs> there, yes, there is that, right? Her complete inability to perform the role. So, and also the terrible scripts and, and her miscasting. So, okay, she, it wasn't her fault she was miscast. It wasn't her fault the scripts were awful. It was her fault she was terrible playing the Doctor, right? I'm sorry, she's got to take responsibility. Doctor season 11, 12 and Flux were notably lacking in standout episodes. Uh, all of them. Made, uh, made worse by the demon controversy of the Timeless Child arc and too many underwhelming scripts. There were, however, no expectations after seeing off uh, competition from Rose, uh, Rosa, Spyfall, and War of the uh, War of the Sontarans. War of the Sontarans was a better episode, and it was still shit. Fusion of the Janoon owns its place in, uh, in one's... No, you're just putting it there to represent Jodie, right? And how? Anascar Fusion of the Doom was a tense thriller about the Doctor between the Jadoon platoon and its quarry on surprise present-day Earth. Uh, Jodie Whittaker's era so often struggled to give space uh, to the 13th Doctor and all three of her companions, but separating the group, uh, who then coaxed out some of the strongest work. Oh, no, it, again, she was shit in the whole thing. Oh, and again, the, the story was awful. That was the one where she met another doctor and she didn't recognize her and the other doctor didn't recognize her. It made no sense. They're like, oh, we'll just go our separate ways then. Goodbye. Goodbye. That makes sense. Never let the final set kick the cute human doing into overnight. No, it was shit. Leave me alone. Five doctors. Yes. Oh, I love the five doctors. That is, that is a fucking good show, right? I love the five doctors. Uh, Dark, does, do I think the Daleks? I, I prefer the Five Doctors of the Daleks, but Daleks is uh, excellent scripting. Do I? Yeah, I'm gonna put the. the I, I agree with the Daleks above uh, Curse of Favorite, though. End of time. No, no, I that is not the best of the ten years at all. I thought it was kind of, a, I thought that was one of his weakest stories, right? I disagree. I mean, look, this guy's probably young. Probably got into Doctor Who with uh, David Tennant. So for him, it was probably very, very emotional. But there was too many uh, plot threads left dangling. Let's see how old this guy is. Uh, we have his Twitter. Uh, I mean, he looks okay. He looks like he's in his 20s, probably. Pro who knows? Uh, God. Do I see that? I, I go, well, How? So I'm probably emotional. And Deadly Assassin, yes. Oh, uh, uh, and I, yeah, I agree with this ranking as well. Deadly Assassin is one of the all-time great greatest episodes of Doctor Who. People were pissed about that in the seventies, the re redefinition, the reinvention of Gallifrey. But that one, you see, what's the rule with uh, changing everything in Doctor Who? It's got to be good. As long as it's good, you can get away with most things, right? I uh, think uh, so this was Robert Holmes redoing the uh, Manchurian Candidate with Tom Baker. Uh, and Doctor and I, uh, yeah, I think a massive success, right? A massive success. Dead the Doctor, yes, I agree with that, but I think I, I would have put it under the five Doctors. You were. Case around the Zonic, yes, so that was a, uh, probably one of Peter Davison's be best stories. Uh, uh, and uh, significantly better than The End of Time as a, as a swan song. Inferno, yes. That's in the top 20, no question. Well done, Nine Doctor. I will agree with this. I love this story. This is what he compiled his finale. Um, 
so much about this was fantastic, right? I uh, I love the uh, Mondosian Cybermen. Very ballsy, right? Very ballsy to bring them in and make them absolutely terrifying, right? Uh, the dual time frame, uh, fantastic, right? The uh, uh, as he, he gets there just as uh, Bill Potts is, is cyber eyes, and then you got the uh, the Johnson Master at his absolute best, actually feeling like the master for the for, oh, one and only time. Right, just absolutely best teaming up with the Missy Master who wants to turn good. Everything about this was excellent. Uh, I really, I the great science fiction ideas, great performances. Uh, uh, and, and you know, my only thing I would change about this and with the Doctor Falls is there should have been more generations of Cybermen he was fighting, right? I wish there was some Earthshock Cybermen in there, I wish there was some uh, Tomb Cybermen in there, and some uh, uh either invasion or uh, um what's it called again uh invasion or revenge of the, i guess it's, yeah revenge of the cybermen right that's the only thing that would have made it better uh, and it was obviously supposed to be his, his regeneration story uh anyway though, i wouldn't agree with that really i don't dislike that but i i don't it, it's it's by far from my favorite trouton right there's a lot there's a lot better trousers like, uh, Web, uh, Web of Fear is is probably my favourite Trouton story. What's my favourite? Let's have a quick look. Shall we rank Trouton? You know what? Why not? Why not? We'll do that. Episode guide. Let's have a look. Uh, second Doctor. Five. So here. Let's start a new... Uh, Word doc, a new uh, uh, text doc. Let's have a look. Let, let's work this out. You know, you know I'll, share, I'll, I'll, I'll share the text doc instead. Doink. So we start off. Oh, now, now I can't find the doc. Where, where, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Come back. Oh, there it is. There you go. So Power of the Dark is pretty darn good opening. I love the power. It's really creepy. Of the oh, poor of the Daleks. <laughs> Uh, the floor of the dark, floor of the Daleks. Whoa, get in there, darling. <laughs> oh man, when the AI's there, I'm gonna do the floor of the Daleks. Uh, Highlanders, Highlanders go underneath that. Yeah, who were, uh, yeah, but it's not bad, it's not great. Underwater mess, well, yeah, way underneath. That's that's uh, uh if I'm being charitable, shit. Moonbase uh, goes over here. Moonbase, not as good as uh, um, Power of the Dogs, but Macro Terra. Oh, look at that. Still yours. Comes in at the top. I fucking love Macro Terra. Uh, Faceless Ones, or Power of the Daleks, or Moon. Yeah. Oh, it's a tough one. Yeah, I think I'm going to make Faceless Ones. Yeah, look, look, look. The Cybermen and Daleks do do boost those stories. Uh, faceless ones. Uh, excellent. Oh, Evil of the Daleks right at the top. Okay, the Evil of the Daleks. That's the only animation I can really full-throatedly recommend, right? That's such an enjoyable animation. Uh, Tomb of the Cybermen. Okay, that goes on. <laughs> okay, we're in good territory now. Tomb of the Cybermen. The only reason it's being beaten by Evil of Darks is because Evil of Darks is so incredibly epic. Um, Abominable Snowman really suffered by that animation, right? Uh, um, I'm going to put it down here. I'm, so, I'm sorry. A bomb. A bomb. Yeah. A bomb. Ah, come on. A bomb in Abominable Snowman. Snowmen. <laughs> My mistake. Enemy of the World. So this is what they put up there. Man, no, Enemy of the World is... What's interesting, I, I will still put it over here. No, actually, underneath here. Actually, underneath Faces ones. I like that too. Man, that's really going low down. Enemy of the World. Fear of the Deep. God, that's another one. The animation really hurt it, right? Really, really, really hurt it. Um, I don't know where to put that. Because I'm trying to imagine. It, I think 
Okay, I'm going on the what I believe it to have been, even though I never saw it. I le- heard the audio of it, and I think yeah, the animation just cack. Um, yeah, Fury f- from the Deep. See that again? It really, really hurt that story. Web of Fear, though. Oh boy. Uh, uh, man, I'm gonna skip Web of Fear. Web of Fear. Where does that go? That's really that's up here. Web of Fear. Second. And Wheel in Space. Um, it's a bit meandering, right? I think I'm going to put that... I'm going to put that off end of the world. Wheel in Space. Okay, one second. Let me send a quick message. Uh, Doink. Uh, so fine, we're up to Wheel of Space. And then, now, now I've lost the text doc again. Where, where is this? Again, I want to be, uh, insist this is uh, decided by science, right? This is pure science, baby. Pure science. So Underwater Man is still at the bottom. We did, uh, oh, Wheel of Space. Did I put that in yet? No, I didn't. Oh, I did put Wheel of Space in. Dominators. So now you, uh, it's an interesting question. Where are you going to put Dominators? Which I quite like, but it's, it's kind of shit in a lot of ways as well. Uh, we're in space. I think Dominator is about the same. I like the quarks. Don't get me wrong. Mind Robber, I'm going to put way up there actually because I, I do like that. Uh, raw Mind Robber. No, I'm going to. It's going after Power of the Daleks. Mind Robber. Invasion, though, that's high up there. Um, that goes after two of the side men. Invasion. Uh, crow talk to shit. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, uh, with the South African uh, crystalline monsters, they are much better in the uh, BBC book. Uh, what's it called again? Alien bodies. They were really good in that, right? So the crotons, I will put. Uh, ooh, that's going down quite. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it goes underneath the dominators. Who were <laughs> crotons? Or Crontons, as I just wrote. Seeds of Death, excellent. For, wait, 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 how did I miss the Ice Warriors? Man, I just skipped over the Ice Warriors. Let me put those in now. Where, where's that going to go? Base Under Siege. Uh, yeah, over here. Ice Warriors. And then we got, uh, we did a second, Seeds of Death. Uh, we did, did I put Seeds of Death in? Let's have a look. I put it in somewhere. Ice War... No, it didn't. Fine, that's why I realised I didn't put Ice Warriors in. So, I think Ice War... Uh, Seeds of Death over here. Seeds of Death. Space Pirates is a bit naff. Put that over here. I think here, actually. Space Pirates. And then the War Games, that goes way up here, right? That is one of the best... Best uh, uh, examples of fantastic writing, war game. So there you go. So that that's the correct order, right? That's the correct order. Let's run through the rest of these stories. Uh, rest of these. Uh, now now I've lost the window. What? Where the hell? Oh, hang on. That was there. It was right in front of me. Doink. Five. Right. Number ten. So yeah, that's the correct order, right? That is the correct order for the uh, travels and stories. H- how they got. Enemy of the world as their best story when it's like in the bottom echelons. Uh, uh, they they are bad, right? They are very bad. Okay, fine. Let's just whip whiz through the rest of these. She cried. Jigger, jigger. Um, fine. So, enemy of the world. Top ten. Uh, Doctor dancers. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, absolute classic. This is this is Doctor Who reaching its uh, um, reaching its potential in the two thousand five series. Demons. Yes. Uh, uh, I love seeing the unit the, the unit crowd outside uh, uh, out of uniform. Who were uh, human nature, family of blood? I will put the uh, put it, the demons. No, I think that's on a par with them. That might be slightly better, right? Yeah, human nature, family of blood, another all time classic. Tunnels of Wang Chai Yang, yeah, six. That's a good uh, invasion. Okay, we're agreeing. Go to the fireplace, no, right? Go to the fireplace is great for thirty five minutes. The last ten minutes is just like padding. Genesis of the Daleks. Now, what would I put first? Genesis of the Daleks 
or Talons of Wen Chiang. I'm putting Talons of Wen Chiang before, but it, it should be in there in the uh, top ten. Blink. Uh, okay, so what they're going to do is the number one story of all time is Hell. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. And I say that as a rabbi and a man of science. Fuck off. Right? Really? No, don't get me wrong. Great performance, but you can only watch that episode once. Right? It doesn't It doesn't fly a second time, she cried. My name's Vila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.